Hello again. Today we're going to go over a different radio than the previous videos. We're going to go over the Kenwood TM-D710G. We're going to go over initial setup, some things you'll want to change right away when you first power the radio on, as well as progr manually programming in repeaters or simplex frequencies. First thing you're going to want to do when you get the radio after getting it everything connected and you power the radio on, you'll want to go through into the menu feature and change a couple things so you can utilize the microphone. The mic button's a lot easier. Um, to do that, you can see I've already turned this one on. When you turn it on, um, you'll notice keys across the bottom. Um, first one, key F is for function, tone, reverse, low, PF1, PF2. Um, the PF1 and PF2 change different things. Um, PF1 from the box is set to where it will automatically tune to the weather stations. Um, PF2 will change between band A and band B. Um, first thing you want to change is to put a enter key on the microphone. Right now the microphone is listed as PF1, 2, 3, and 4 on the microphone. They have Kenwood thought it was a good idea to do it backwards. You would think PF1 would be the A button and PF4 would be D. It's the complete opposite. PF1 is D, PF2 is C, PF3 is B, and PF4 is A. Um, we'll go through into the menu, show you what each one does. To get to that in the menu, press the function button. After you press the function button, press in on the VFO dial. It'll also bring up the menu screen with your audio, transmit, receive, memory, DTMF, repeater, all that. You will want to use the VFO knob to scroll over to auxiliary. Press in on the VFO knob and it'll bring up your auxiliary menu. You can see the first one, your power on message. Um, when you get it, it'll say, power on message will be hello. Use the VFO knob to scroll through. You can change your brightness level of the screen, display, auto brightness, backlight color. You have the option of green or amber. I prefer green for indoor use, amber for outdoor. Contrast level, display reverse mode. What this is, it changes from right now the screen is green with black writing. If I want to change that, I can press in on the VFO knob and then use the dot VFO dial to change. If you go to negative, the majority of the screen will be black with the lettering and the color you choose between green or amber. The positive display seems to be a little bit easier to read for me. Some people might like it the other way. It might be different at nighttime or in the dark, being able to see see the display a little bit better. After you choose the display you want, press in on the VFO knob to confirm it. You can see here panel PF buttons. PF1, if you remember, was the this button right here is the second button from the right is set for weather channel. You go to PF panel, PF2, this is control. The mic, PF1. I remember I was explaining the P, they have it backwards to where PF1 is the D button, which will switch between A band and B band. PF2, which is C, is your memory mode. If you press C, it'll go into memory mode and you'll, it'll bring up you can scroll through the memories you have programmed into the radio. PF3 is VFO. That'll this is where you can enter frequency manually. PF4 they have set to call. Uh, when you don't have a, that'll allow you to change frequency, but you don't have an enter button on the 
microphone in order to complete everything for setup. Um, what I recommend doing, if you press in on the VFO knob, you can change the PF4, or PF4 is the A button, to a bunch of different options. I recommend scrolling through and one will come up and be enter. Set that to enter, that will allow you to enter commands on the microphone without having to wait. Some of them have a time delay where you'll enter something then five seconds later it'll con auto automatically confirm it or you'll have to reach up and press the VFO knob in to confirm it. Now you press the VFO knob in to enter that that's what you want to change that to. And now the A button is set to an enter button. To get out of the screen, you press the escape button. That'll bring you back here. That is the big thing you want to change whenever you get the radio. Um, unless you want to use the control head only for entering stuff and not really worry about the microphone. I find it much easier when you're driving to use the microphone to be able to enter frequency in. Um, now to enter a frequency manually, you want to make sure you're in VFO mode. VFO mode was the B button on the microphone. Now that I'm in the VFO mode, I can press A, which will allow me to enter frequency. I'll go ahead and enter the Rocky Mountain Radio League's Evergreen Repeater. You know, so I'm on that repeater right now but I do not have any repeater shift or tone set for it so I will not be able to access the repeater. To set the tone you will notice right here the third button from the left is labeled tone. If you press that button once it will show a T. That means it's just a straight transmit tone only. Now you can cycle through to the different tone options CT which is the CT CSS for tone in and tone out. Press it again it'll go through your digital co coded squelch. Open. Now this repeater uses a tone in of the tone is 103.5 Hertz to get be able to set the tone frequency if I press the function button, the tone button turned to a T select. If I press the tone select button, I can enter, change the tone. You'll see that 88.5 is what it's at now. I can use the VFO knob to change the tone squelch frequency. Once I get to the one I want to confirm it, press in on the VFO knob. Now I have the tone set to 103.5 for this repeater. To set the offset for the repeater, I press the F button again. You'll notice next to the tone select there's a shift which is your repeater shift. Press the repeater shift, the first one comes up positive. Push the function button again, I can push the shift again and it'll go to negative. Now if I cycle through that by pushing function and the shift again it'll go back to simplex some reason it doesn't say stay on that screen to where you can just cycle through by clicking the button three times you have to press the function button again to do hit it again after you press it once now I have the tone set at 103.5 with the negative repeater shift I could go through talk on the repeater right now no problems now if I want to save the into memory the one thing you want to do is press the function button again and you'll notice on the left hand side of the display the bottom button says MN which is memory in that's to program a memory in before you press anything else you'll notice in the top right above the frequency you just entered there's a flashing number with an arrow next to it the arrow next to it if it's filled in indicates that there's already a frequency programmed into that location I can turn the dial to the location I want 
if there's an arrow that is not filled in, that is an empty slot, nothing, or nothing is programmed in it at that time. I'm going to change it to memory slot 42 so I can stay consistent between radios. Now it's flashing at memory slot 42. If I press the M in button, we'll save it in that memory slot. Now to get to it to see it in memory, I'm still in VFO mode. If I press the MR button on the lower left, you can see that it has the frequency on memory slot 42. There's people on the repeater right now. Now to, if I want to save a name into this instead of just having the frequency, if I press the function button, and then press in on the VFO knob, I can go to memory in the main menu. Now, if I go into memory here, it will be memory. Anything I do in here for memory will be memory for that channel that I just saved in location 42. Press in on the VFO knob. First option that will come up is memory name. Now you can press in to select it. You'll notice you'll have the display that's flashing right now there's nothing in there because there's no name saved with the memory I can use the VFO dial to go through to set the memory name I set it as R after I get to the letter if I press in on the VFO knob it confirms that letter and it'll move me to the next one Because this is the Rocky Mountain Radio League, I'll do RMRL. Enter a space button. And I will go enter EVE for Evergreen. They only give you eight characters. Now if you notice you go through, you can do all capital or capital and lowercase, just scroll through, it'll go through all the special characters, uppercase and lowercase. So I get to the end, it'll confirm there, and I can press escape to get out, and you'll notice above the frequency will have the name displayed. Now with it being in memory mode, I can scroll through to other frequencies I have saved in here, and go back, shows location 42. Um, what this allows me to do is yeah, I'm on this on memory channel 5 and want to switch frequency. On the microphone I have options between I can use the star button is a down and pound is up. I can use those if I want to scroll through the different frequencies by pressing up or down or if I want to enter, if I know what location it's stored in, I can press the A button that we had programmed for enter. And then I can press 0, 4, 2. And it'll automatically take me to that channel location. Now if we would not have enter programmed in the enter button, it was set to call, which would automatically switch to the call frequency that is pre-programmed into the radio. Um, it's a single frequency, there's no way to change between them. You can, it's, the call is more of, if you're used to other radios that have the home location in their memory. Now you can go through and change the home location, but then again, you, it only gives you one option for frequency. It doesn't give you multiple options to where with the enter key, you can press the enter key and then enter any location you want. You have a thousand memory locations in this radio. I highly doubt you'll use all of them or remember what all of them are. If you do, 
And so you're going to be looking at a, a cheat sheet and be able to just push, punch in the location you want it to switch to. That's one of the big reasons to program one of the PF buttons on the microphone with the enter. It's a lot easier to use the microphone to switch memory channels while you're driving than it is to reach up and look at the display. You can essentially hit the enter in the location you want without even looking at the microphone if you're familiar with the button location. Again, that's a quick, easy way to enter a memory manually into the radio. I highly recommend learning your radio, being able to program it without relying on a computer and software. You, you're out traveling somewhere and want to program a repeater in, you don't want to take the time to pull over, get your laptop out, plug it into your radio to program a repeater in. Knowing how to do it manually is a big benefit, not only for yourself, but for others if you have to hurry up and change a frequency real quick. Hope that, that helps you out a little bit. I will be doing more videos on different features of the radio. Um, I'll be going through programming more frequencies in manually and setting up the APRS system in that, which will be featured in another video. 7-3. Have a good afternoon. Keep learning about your radio.